What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania. Now today guys we are going to be discussing the portal to Alfheim. Now it is a little bit of a journey for us to get from where we are now to the portal to Alfheim, but I really do want to get a couple of the things that it offers us, specifically the ability to make the warp lens. So I discussed this a fair bit and I'm going to talk about it a little bit before I get into our plans for today. But the warp lens is very important for automating a lot of different stuff. A lot of the time you use the bore warp lens. So to get the warp lens, you need pixie dust combined with a regular mana lens. And that seems pretty simple. It's just one thing you need. Well, you need the elven trade for that. And that requires the portal to Alfheim. Now it's really cheap to do once you have that, but it does require a fair bit of mana. So we need to get all that set up today. And to do that, before we can even set it up, we need to make Terra Steel. Now we haven't really gone into discussing how to make Terra Steel, so we're gonna briefly discuss that today. I do need to make a setup for it. I've got some area cleared out right over here. Uh, so we're gonna go over that, and then we are going to make the portal, and we're gonna do a little bit of trading. So uh, one thing I wanted to discuss before we jump into this is uh, I did start you know, making this area look a little bit nicer. I don't really know what I wanna do uh, up higher on the wall, um, but over here, I started blending it in with the grass, the living rock. I think it looks really nice. And eventually, we'll just keep expanding this out, add some trees around here that won't get chopped down by this setup. Um, and of course, we're going to expand this once we have the new uh, warp bore lens, that we're bore warp lens, I should say. Uh, also, the sound quality should be a lot better because I am finally home. I finished all my finals. So now we're going to be doing daily videos too. So this marks the first day of daily videos uh, for the winter break for me. So now that I've got all that rambling out of the way, we can get into this. So the first thing we need to do is make this setup to make Terra Steel. Now, if you guys do not know, uh, if you search up Terra Steel in here and you click on it, you don't really get much info because you don't craft it normally. Uh, you don't even craft it by throwing something into a mana pool. You are going to get it by using a couple of different intricate things. So we can open up the Lexica Botania. And if we go, a couple of easy ways to find it. Um, if you're looking for the Portal to Alfheim stuff, you can go through here, see all the stuff you need. And of course, the t uh, Terra Steel Nuggets are going to require all the Terra Steel that we can get. And basically to make this, we are going to need to use all of this stuff right here. Uh, and then we're going to need some living rock and some lapis. So if we go in and look at the uses for the block of mana steel, you're going to see it is the uh, uh, terrestrial agglomerate, agglomeration plate. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, terrestrial agglomeration plate, I guess. Um, but this is going to be used to make terra steel. Uh, it is a three by three setup. You can read about it in the book. Uh, but it does require the rune of fire, air, water, earth, so all the basic elemental runes, and then the rune of mana, which is very easy to make. Uh, then it requires a block of mana steel and three lapis blocks. So the first thing we are going to be doing today is making that. So we've got three lapis blocks in the top, and I actually... Let's go to this right here and see if we can just shift click it in there. Yeah, so there we go. So we have this. Now on top of that to make this setup, it is a multi-block structure. Um, and you are going to need four lapis blocks and five living rock. Now it is going to be a three by three structure. So let's pick out a nice area for it. We might as well do it right here. So uh, I do have a full, I will almost full mana tablet on me. But we're gonna be digging out this area. And I do need to get a mana steel, well, mana steel every other tool. I've got this really bad shovel right here that I haven't even really needed to touch recently. But uh, yeah, we do need to get some new mana steel tools. But to set this up, you're going to do living rock in an X shape. So one at every corner. Oh, that's not right. We need one at every corner and then one in the center. And then you're going to fill in the rest of that with the lapis. So like so, and then you're going to place down the plate right in the center. And there we go. That is the multi-block structure that we need. You do need to keep in mind that you do have the living rock below this center plate. That is very important. And it is actually noted in the book. And I don't specifically know where we even find that. It might be, I don't think it's under natural apparatus, but um, looking through here, it does tell you how to make it. I think if we go to the Terra Blade and then get our Terra Steel right here, we can shift click it and it says create Terra Steel, which requires a Mana Pearl, Mana Steel Ingot, and Mana Diamond, and roughly half a Mana Pool. But to make this plate right here, if we go over, uh, it should show us the setup for this. So you guys can see right here, there you go. So there's the setup we just made. Uh, and now we can start putting these recipe items in here. So 
come back over here. Now, you do need to transfer mana to this. Every piece of Terra Steel, which of course is going to use the Mana Diamond, Mana Steel Ingot, and Mana Pearl. Uh, they all get dropped in the center there. We are actually going to need mana being infused into this, and each one takes roughly half a mana pool of mana. And that's why I've got all of these mana tablets charged over here, as we needed a lot of mana today, and I just made a couple of those, charged them up so that we have some mana to start dumping into our new mana pools for the episode. And we've got the Mystical White Petals, and this should allow us... Oh, that's the wrong way. This should give us some sparks. Now, if you don't know, you would be able to transfer using a mana spreader, but that's not fast enough. So sparks allow for much faster transfer of mana. Basically, uh, you place one over the mana pool that you're going to use and the other one about uh, over what's going to use the mana and it'll allow you to transfer between them. And I'll give you guys a better example of that in just a second. So we're going to be transferring from, let's say, this mana pool right here. This is our main mana pool for now. Our mana generation is very, very, very bad, and we will fix that in about an episode or two. But what we're going to do is take the spark, and we're going to place it down right over that, and then we're going to place it down right over this. And I believe if we click on this, you can see that that is what it will go to. So it will be transferring to this one right here uh, when it needs it. So it only is going to transfer it when it needs it, and it will be very, very quick. So what we're going to do is make sure that this is over halfway full, and I can take out this mana tablet, we can f uh, make sure it's in the right mode, and toss this in and allow it to get a little bit of extra mana just so we don't run into any issues, um, because if this process stops, you don't get any of your mana back, it is all gone. So we only need one Terra Steel ingot for right now, and we can throw all of these down right over here, and you can see it's transferring the mana, and once it's done, it will form the Terra Steel, and we will be good to go. Now, we can kind of gauge how fast it's going by looking at this, but keep in mind, a big issue that does occur when you are using a mana spreader is that it will not transfer it fast enough, and these will actually despawn, and that is a big, big problem. So that's why you do want to use fast transfer. Very loud noise that actually kind of made me jump a little bit in my chair, uh, but we have our Terra Steel ingot, and now this is going to get transformed into a bunch of nuggets, because that's what we're going to be using it for today. So, we have now successfully made Terra Steel. Not too painful of a process. So now we go back, and it's time to look at the portal to Alfheim. Now, if you guys don't know, I believe it is um, in mythology that Alfheim is, is one of like the nine worlds uh, in which the elves live. And so this is the Alphamancy tab. You also might know it from Sword Art Online. I guarantee at least some of you have seen it. Uh, I know it's a pretty mainstream anime to watch. I personally enjoyed it, but I know a lot of people don't. I did not like the Alfheim arc, which is, is pretty universally shared opinion, but you might remember it from Alfheim Online, which was kind of like the elf fairy game that they played. Um, but yeah, so right now to create the portal, think of it like a nether portal. Now you don't actually go through it. You can't go through it. It's not that strong, but what you can do is throw items through it, which is going to make the elven trade possible. So we need eight living wood blocks, easy enough, three glimmering living wood blocks, which is basically just living wood and glowstone, and then one elven gateway core, and then two mana pools, and two natura pylons. So if we go over, here's how you make the gateway core. The first three nuggets we got to use, and six living wood. So we're going to come in here, we can grab out all this stuff that we're going to eventually need, uh, into our inventory and we can start crafting so the first thing we got to do is take the living wood right here six three nuggets and make the gateway core so this is the basis for the gateway then we're going to be using three of these to make the three glimmering living wood now these do actually produce light they look pretty darn cool uh, and you'll easily be able to tell where these are going to go in the structure because they are so different from the rest of the blocks the gateway core and the living wood block itself actually have relatively similar textures, but it's pretty simple that this goes pretty much in the center base of it. Uh, so now we've got our regular eight living wood. We've got all the blocks for this. We've got our mana pools. We actually only need two. I had this extra one uh, left over in case we wanted to transfer to a different one before doing the terra steel. So we can actually drop this mana pool back in here. We're not going to need it. And now what we have to do is uh, start making these pylons. So I believe that they're mainly referenced in StarCraft in here. Uh, if we look at the portal to Alfheim and scroll back over, you can see you need the Natura pylon. Now uh, that's basically just taking a mana pylon and combining it with Terra Steel and then an Eye of Ender. Now the amount of Ender Pearls I had to get for today's episode was kind of annoying. Uh, I actually, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that bad. But um, yeah, so we've got all this stuff right here that we gotta get. 
Uh, so we've got the Terra Steel Nuggets, we've got the Eye of Ender, and we need the regular Mana Pylon. We can shift-click to see the recipe. And here's the StarCraft reference, you must construct additional pylons. I love all the references in this, um, but yeah, this is just going to be two gold, two Mana Steel, and one Mana Diamond. And we need at least two of these. So we can simply go like such. Not very expensive to make, but we've got our Mana Pylons, and now we need to convert both of these over and make them into the natura pylons so i actually thought this was going to be a relatively long episode but it's turning out to be pretty darn quick um but yeah so now that we have these you need a mana pool to go with each and we've got all the building blocks that we need now keep in mind uh there is a lot of mana stuff that is required for this so we're going to construct it over here uh i kind of want to build it near the wall i don't want to build it in the wall because it does i believe drop the items out the back of it so we're going to set it up kind of right here. Now, something that's really cool that they offer in Batania is the ability to visualize things you construct. So when you open this up, you scroll over and you get to this right here, which is the Alfheim portal. Now you can see that you've got uh, in the center of the left, right, and top rows of three, you are going to be the center block uh, using the glimmering living wood. And then every other block except for the base center one is going to be regular living wood. And then the base center is the gateway core. So it's not a huge portal. Uh, it looks pretty cool, but what you can do is if you think you're going to have trouble, you can click visualize and then you can hit escape and you can right click any block to anchor this structure um, preview to it. So what we can do is let's say we want to put it right here. So we'll put down the block and now it is locked there. So it's pretty easy to just right click down the elven gateway core where you want it and then it'll lock it there. And now we've got the room around it. You can see all of this to construct and we can start building all of this on there. And the great thing, and you'll see this once we've finished with it, and I'll uh, use some of these living wood or uh, living rock blocks as structural blocks for now. But something that's really cool that they do offer is telling you when you've completed the structure, and you'll see that in chat in just a second. So there you go, structure complete. It's in a nice bright green color, much like this portal soon will be. But we're gonna clear this area out right here now. So we've got just the portal. You could spruce it up a little bit. I don't think it really gets affected if you put extra blocks around it to make it look nicer, but these are going to be mandatory. Uh, so one thing I also wanna keep in mind is that I like things to be symmetrical. Eventually we are going to clear this area out over here and expand and make it nice and green and lush and all that stuff. But for now, we do need to put down two Natura pylons. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that right or just butchering it, but uh, you need at least two of these. And basically, they're going to allow the mana to enter the portal. And so it doesn't really matter. They need to be within an 11 block radius of this. Uh, so they don't need to be super close. I would normally put one down like right where this torch is. And we'll just place that back down right there. Um, and I put another one down on the other side of it. And it looked pretty decent. These look pretty darn cool. But now because of our you know limitations, we're just going to put one down right next to this right next to it so this looks awful uh i do know that but <laughs> i mean it looks as awful as it can i think these things look really really cool um i'd use them for just normal decorations eventually but yeah so you need at least two of these now a couple things to go over and i do want to read this in the book to make sure i get it right but um yeah so they can be uh, laid out in any 11 by 11 area around the core and to open up the portal you right click with a wand of the forest now this does require that you have enough mana. So the portal requires a substantial amount of mana deposited into the pools to open it up, and then it's divided among all the pools. So if you have a bunch of pools that have you know, the mana dispersed in between them because it allows you to have a bigger buffer, that is not a problem at all. As long as they are all within the radius, it will be evenly divided. Um, and it seems to be able to send items through it, but the mana is required to actually send the items through it and do transactions. Now, uh, it basically splits it again, and it's not strong enough to allow people to go through it. Um, and also, something that's in the end says, the amount of information about Alfheim stored in this lexicon is limited to the entry alone. It seems like a lost subject of sorts uh, in this world. Perhaps letting the elves have a look at it might prove beneficial. Maybe they can share knowledge that can be beneficial. So I believe that means we want to throw this through. So we'll give that a try at the end if we have any mana left. But as far as I'm aware, I think it costs a bunch of mana to open it. Um, and then... Uh, to open it and i don't know if it continues to cost mana so we'll have to take a look at that but that is what we have all of these mana tablets here for so we're going to throw these down and we're going to make sure these pools are sucking mana out of the tablets so we'll throw a tablet down there and i don't know if it's actually on top of that i don't know if we can get it on top of there 
There we go. Okay, so that should be depositing into the pool, right? I mean, that one should be depositing in too. Okay, so those don't want to deposit into those pools. Maybe we need to break this. Please give it back to me. Please, please give it back to me. Okay, there we go. So we're going to break both of these and we'll throw them down and hopefully have a little bit of better luck with... Oh, okay, there we go. Please start depositing into the pool. Oh, I had it backwards, didn't I? I had it backwards. God, don't, don't even comment that. I had it backwards. I know someone's going to comment that. That was awful. I'm tired. Forgive me. Uh, so we're going to let these deposit. They should fill up the pools a fair bit. Um, and that should be enough to open it. And then once we open it, we are going to be throwing in as many of these mana pearls as we can get. Because as I showed before, the mana pearls are what are going to give us the pixie dust. I've gotten nine of them. I just couldn't bring myself to get any more. Um, so I'm going to let these go. So we got that. And throw down another mana tablet in each of them. That should be a full mana pool coming out from both of these. Yep, so we'll let that finish. And then I have, you know, my little bit of mana left from my current mana tablet, which... I will have to spend a fair bit of time refilling. And just so you guys know, the reason that we're doing this is because I want next episode to make, uh, I want to make use of, I think it's called the Entropinium. Let's go take a look at the generating floor. Yeah, the Entropinium. I want to automate that. And we would like to use the warp lens for that. So just a heads up as to what we'll see in next episode. So we can throw these down. And they shouldn't start putting mana in here until we open it. So I hope we have enough. I really don't feel like cutting and going like a day in real life to get mana in this thing to open this back up. But we're going to open it up and then we're going to get ready with these to throw them in. And we're going to make sure we have enough mana left for the Lexica Botania. So we're going to right click with our Wand of the Forest. And it should open it. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. Took a, took a fair bit of mana. Now we want to keep an eye on this to see if it keeps going down. Is it going to keep going down? Uh, it doesn't really look like it's draining this to keep it open, but trades do drain it. So we throw one in and boom, the pixie dust comes out. Now let's see how much that drained it. That didn't really drain it that much. Okay, they're even now though. So we'll throw all these in there and see how much that drains it. Now, obviously, if we go in here, nothing happens. It can't transport us. So let's take a look at this. Now, I really hope it doesn't cost mana to keep open, um, but we're going to throw the Lexica Batania in there and hope nothing bad happens. Okay, so we got it back. Nothing bad happened. Ooh, okay. A message from Elv Elvengard. Greetings, we noticed that our portal was opened via a link from another world. That's rather shocking news indeed. We thank you very much for providing us with a repository of the knowledge from your world as to keep us up to date to what happened since we left it. It's been a while since then. It's good to see it's doing well. Is that, how long is this sentence right here? That's a long sentence. That's a, that is a run-on sentence, if I've ever seen one. After some discussion with the High Council of Elven Guard, we have decided to cooperate with you. You, you see, reading through your Lexica Botania has shown us a good amount of resources from your world that we would be extremely keen as to get our hands on, as these are non-existent in our lands. The link you have managed to establish is rather weak. No living being will be able to go through, as you... You already know. However, there is a positive side to this. The link strikes the fabric of time of both of our worlds in a way where it doesn't keep them in sync. That's the reason why you received your book back so quickly. When it comes to mana and other magical energies, we are plenty stocked on them. So worry not about the portal closing on our end. Let's put this in prospect. In order for the advance of both of our civilizations, we vow to accept a given set of resources from your world we lack in ours in exchange for resources you lack in yours. We have taken the liberty of assigning our best scribes to put together a great set of knowledge from our world we're willing to share. You can find it in your lexicon just as you would find knowledge from yours. We hope you find it enlightening and that it encourages you to invest in our materials. Last but not least, do keep in mind that if you decide to send something we've we have not vouched to trade for. We will assume it as a gift and keep it for ourselves. Just as a forewarning, we look forward to exchanging resources with you. Best regards, the High Council of Elven Guard. Okay, interesting. So we now have all of this stuff in this tab. That is awesome. Now let's take a look at this and see how much it's gone down. So maybe it doesn't cost mana to keep open the portal after you actually open it up. It might, because it looks like it does, but it might not. So I will keep an eye on that to let you guys know. I'm sure you guys will put it in the comments, but 
Uh, we can now see the resources of Alfheim and see the traits. So we can get Dream. That looks really cool. Uh, Dreamwood can be turned into various decorative blocks. Uh, miscellaneous recipes. Dreamwood twigs. Interesting. Elementium. There we go. So it's a lot of pink stuff. Uh, nether quartz. Uh, okay, interesting. Elven quartz. So this stuff actually looks pretty darn cool. So we can get elf glass. Cool. Uh, now we can do a bunch of different things to, uh, for rituals, things like that. So we'll go over these in future episodes. I'm not going to discuss them right now. Uh, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. Now, I do apologize for the channel being so inactive. I was, you know, really caught off guard with how busy I was this year at school. And, you know, I did have to take a little bit of time away from YouTube every week to, you know, catch up on my schoolwork. And I know all you guys say that you'll always be here when I get back, but I did feel bad. I did want to apologize for that, which is why we're going to be doing the daily videos. Uh, I've been missing playing Minecraft, modded Minecraft specifically. So expect videos every day all the way through like January 15th. Um, you will be seeing Dr. Rage Hard in your sub boxes if YouTube decides to want to work properly every day at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video or found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And uh, I will talk to you guys later.